Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our tall tales. Okay. <laughs> and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 7, Episode 16, Campfire Tales. I think you put it best. So today's story is a Disney direct-to-DVD release broken into three story segments that are loosely connected and have a vague overarching connection by cutting back to the main cast. And it's better than those. Much better. Which one was your favorite? Miss Main. No, oh, because of the story, meaning, or overall design of the characters. Yes. <laughs> uh, I would like to know more about Applejack's story, because it's almost like he struck something in the ground that magically gave him power. Kind of, but to me, her story felt the weakest. It's like, okay, so he was determined. Nobody could go help him? Hello, in Avatar, all the Earthbenders went and helped Aang when the volcano was erupting, and the non-Earthbenders also came and helped dig the trench. Yeah, I was expecting that, to suddenly see the villagers go, oh, we have to help him. Yes, and that it's not just about individual strength, but the strength of people coming together. But no, he gets a magic MacGuffin and suddenly he can save everyone. Just because he was stubborn. I thought maybe he was like a Thor representative? Except instead of a hammer, it's a shovel? A little bit, because the design in Applejack's story felt a little more Viking-esque. Mm-hmm. And it also felt overall more like How to Train Your Dragon, which is also very Viking, because they talk about Vikings in that. I think the whole village is a Viking village. Pretty much. Also, it has a little bit of Americana, because it felt a little bit like a whole Paul Bunyan type thing. Mm. You know, being incredibly strong and oversized and doing these ridiculous feats of strength. Though I did like the designs for the ponies in that particular story. Oh, I did like the designs for all of them. Let's move on to the one you really like. <laughs> Miss me. Yes, I really like the overall Asian feel of the designs. You know, they didn't go like try to make it an anime, but... It had just a very calm, very zen look to it. And I love that they changed the overall design. It was less the blocky, more solid pony design and a more elongated horse design. A little more like the representatives from Saddle Arabia and a little bit like Celestia and Luna. And then I really like the curvature of the horn. That was a very nice design touch. Yeah, that story felt like it was definitely taking place over in Japan, China, some of those Asian countries, like you said, especially the architecture with all the arches and... Yes, and the beauty and the simplicity and also a little bit of the lesson. Though you could see that her friend was upset that she was going off to magic school because she walks off and the friend turns her back and walks away. I was like, that point is going to be a problem. Yes. Was the thing Miss Mame was so pure of heart that she heard her friend became empress and she was excited for her. She was happy. It's like, oh, how wonderful for her. She'll be amazing at this. And then she comes back to the village. Mm-hmm. How did everything get in ruin? Because of the empress. That can't be right. Find out. Ooh, it can be. What happened to you? I was jealous. I cast a spell. It went wrong. And now I'm taking my revenge in this way. Mm -hmm. Because if I can't be beautiful, neither can anything else. Except what is mine. Yep, and I shall take everything. Everything that is beautiful shall be mine. Yes, very much the elements of the collector, also elements of greed, and I will have all this beauty because I myself am not beautiful, therefore I must have beautiful things. Because beauty means everything. So does not. Uh, but like the end of that particular story... A little bit of beauty does help make people feel better. Yes. So it's not that beauty is a bad thing. It's that beauty is not a be-all, end-all. Yet being obsessed with anything is the problem. Yes. And that a generosity of spirit can mean a great deal. Yeah, because I was wondering how we are going to get to the point where, you mean that old hag, basically, what Rainbow Dash said? I figured by the end of the story, she would have somehow given up her beauty. And I was figuring it was going to be voluntary, especially when we saw the Empress was involuntary. Because as soon as we saw that she was wearing a shroud, I'm like, okay, either she thinks herself so incredibly beautiful that she won't expose herself to the elements, or something went wrong and she is no longer beautiful. 
Mm-hmm. Because I was wondering what happened to her main color. Because it was a bright red as she walked off. And when we saw her in the palace, gray hairs. Yes. Though also having the mask and the gray mane, it felt like a little callback to Gen 1, where the female ponies are lured into a carnival and their youth is stolen. Because Heartthrob is dancing and she's wearing a mask like that, though it's much more brightly colored. Mm. And one of the big brother ponies is like, Heartthrob, what happened to you? What happened to your muzzle? And she's like, what are you talking about? I am the most beautiful pony ever. Now leave me alone. But she had actually been aged by the evil sorceress who was stealing the youth and magic from all the ponies. Mm. Yeah, I think I did like that story the most. And I kind of predicted what Rainbow Dash was going to talk about. Though what's really interesting, there was no dialogue in Applejack's, but there was dialogue in both of the other two. Yes, Applejack's was much more of a narrative where the other two stories became more immersive because we have voice acting for the characters instead of actually listening to Applejack tell the story. And also Applejack's story kept getting interrupted. So it was almost like they were leading us in like, okay, we're starting to tell these campfire stories. But as we're going along and telling these stories, you're getting more and more involved. You can see it. You can hear it. You know, your imagination is taken over. We're providing the imagination. And speaking of that last story, what did you think of Rainbow Dash's tale? Well, of course it was going to be about a pegasus, because if you notice, Applejack's was about an earth pony, Rarity's was about a unicorn, and so, of course, Rainbow Dash is going to be about a pegasus. Though it's interesting that only Rarity's story featured a female protagonist. Hmm, that's interesting. Though it was about... Beauty, but beauty can be male and female. Yes, but this is still technically a children's show, so. And the designs for Rainbow Dash's story felt very Spartan, mm. so more Romanesque. And the one dragon looked a lot like the former Dragon Lord. Yeah, considering dragons seem to have a long life, I think it was. <laughs> Probably was. And the other dragon looked familiar too, the green one. Mm-hmm. Well, considering how often dragons have been shown in the series, why not reuse assets, especially for what amounts to a fairy tale? Though who knows, they could actually be the dragons we've seen. Entirely possible. And even though the stories are legends, in a world where magic actually exists, they could theoretically all be true. Mm -hmm. Or have elements of truth in them. It, yeah, I liked Flash. And, you know, his loyalty and dedication and that he won by being clever. It wasn't just feats of strength. He was like, I have a plan. I know it's risky, but we need to save our comrades. Mm -hmm. And I like how they actually used the weather as a weapon. Yes, because weather could totally be a weapon. And weather is a factor in any conflict. Fighting in winter was terrible because... Winter would take more soldiers than the actual battle. Freezing conditions, lack of food. Mm, like decide to use a mountain pass instead of the other way because the mountain pass would be more sneaky. Problem is it's a mountain pass. In the middle of winter. Or even if it's warmer, it's colder up there. So, yeah. And that he didn't rely on just himself. He planned out, look, I'll draw them away. You go rescue our comrades and then this will be our final stroke. All of us together. So there wasn't that boastingness that Rainbow Dash had in the mysterious Mare do well where Flash needs to be taken down a notch. No, thought through everything. You mm -hmm. know, his wits were just as much of a weapon as his flying ability. And that shield that he got. The shield was a nice touch, especially, you know, Dragonfire. And those are some very creative and clever moves using it. I'm also like, what? I know it's fireproof, but isn't it getting hot? Just a little? Yeah, especially when he used it as a kind of a surfboard. <laughs> Just a little. But yeah, they had some clever animation for that, too. Very nice. I do like how the dragons were like, yeah, we're, we're done. It's like, yeah, not worth it. We're done. Mm-hmm. And he comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and then gets to keep the shield, because his commander's like, yeah, true hero. Why don't you hang on to that? Because, you know, I'm an older pony. I don't need to be doing this stuff anymore. You, you youngsters go take care of it. I'll just be commander. Yeah, I'll just tell you what to do. Be over here. Be safe behind this giant rock wall. You'll have fun. 
Yeah, and for the stories, it's interesting that both Rarities and Rainbow Dashes focused on their actual element of harmony, where Applejack's was more of stubborn and determined, which we see so much of Applejack being stubborn that it's almost like it is her element of harmony over honesty. Mm hmm. I also was just remembering the fan theory that Applejack's actually the element of loyalty and Rainbow Dash is actually the element of honesty because of how blunt she is with people. And Applejack is very loyal to her family and everything like that. Yeah, well, I think you could find elements of each in each of them except for magic because only two of them are unicorns. Though Pegasi have weather magic. And some would say Earth Ponies have plant magic. With the ability to grow food and do it well. Mm hmm. Or grow anything. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a rock farm? <laughs> Yes, an actual farm, not a quarry, a farm. Shall we talk about the story around the stories? Let's. Ah, uh, flying spiders. Ugh. Yes, did no one pack bug spray? Yeah, and isn't this a problem since apparently they're from a different part? Well, so they normally haven't been seen in this area, so they wouldn't have been prepared for those type of bugs. But you have two unicorns. Couldn't you guys just put up a magic barrier until they go away? Or a magic barrier to shield you guys while you run to the cave? Also, those bug bites healed very quickly. Or a magical giant net sphere thingy to hold all of them and transport them somewhere else? Yeah, or just bubble them long enough to pack up the camp and get moving? And yeah, they healed quite quickly. They also, I'm like, hmm... We need to find out what horns are made of, because apparently they can get bites and be sore and red. Also, poor Rainbow Dash. Yes. Like, the fire itself wasn't hot enough to handle. Let's just get a few extra bug bites. Oh. But all of that healed quite quickly, so... Um, sorry, Rainbow Dash blocking the exit was actually a pretty good idea. You have two Earth Ponies and two Unicorns. You're telling me that with all that apple bucking, plus... Levitation magic. You guys couldn't have cleared that entrance? Though it did lead them to a shortcut. It did. Also, I was a little concerned. Okay, you just blocked the entrance, but you guys are still having a fire in front of a cave. Where is the smoke going? Yeah. Also, the smoke would follow an outlet for fresh air, so you could follow the smoke from the fire. Or you could find out that there was no path for the smoke to follow, and then you have to put out the fire because it's getting smoky in the cave. Mm-hmm. And the fire would be eating up the oxygen. Yes. Also, of all the things to go out and grab, I don't think I would have picked the campfire. <laughs> yeah, especially since for us normal real-world people, moving an entire campfire like that would be kind of hard to do. Pretty much, but some of the supplies, you know, map, blanket, medical kit. I could see not going for the food because that was what drew the bugs. Mm-hmm. I did like Scootaloo. It was fun watching her again. Also felt sorry for her, but it was fun watching her again. Well, she's showing that, yeah, I'm still dealing with this. It's still a problem. I'm trying to be better. And Rainbow Dash is being more awesome. I think, don't worry, I'm here. And it's okay, you can sit right next to me. Mm -hmm. Also, give it a second. I promise you'll like the ending. <laughs> <laughs> ah, They're getting so much better with the animation and expressions. Yeah, however they've done it, they've been able to invest a lot more in the assets. They've managed to do a lot with Flash. Oof. And I do like how they ended up out where they actually wanted to be, though that is story convenient, but still it's nice how they ended up there. Mm -hmm. And I love how they all started going, oh, I got this idea. Oh, I can do this part of this idea. I can do this part of the idea. Incorporating parts of the stories. Mm -hmm. And also how the adults were like, well, this trip kind of sucked. And the kids are like, no, this is all awesome. And the adults are like, really? Yeah, because you were spending time together. Do the adult sisters have they forgotten that at the very beginning, when they were trapped in the cave, they were talking about how, oh, we have each other, everything's still all right because we're together. Apparently by the time we get to Winsome Falls, the big sisters have forgotten that that was the entire point. I think it was more of the fact that they went, oh, they're probably upset now, they probably just want to go home, and then, what? <laughs> so they were pleasantly surprised by how everyone was like, oh yeah, we actually do want to stay, this is going to be awesome, we're here. We're actually at the place we wanted to go, so woohoo! Yeah, so we'll just figure out some new shelter and some new food and we'll, we'll be good. Also, going back to the title episode real quick, not a lot of puns so far this season for the episode titles. Very straight to the point. 
I wonder if they're like, hmm, people complain about how the titles give away what's going on on the episode. <laughs> this one was descriptive, but it didn't really give away what the stories were about. No, it didn't. Or how we were going to get to the point of telling campfire tales. We knew there were going to be stories, but we didn't know what shape all of it was going to take. And even though I saw some images from this episode because I was looking up references for Rainbow Dash, I still wasn't spoiled by the episode either. I saw some of her being overly stung. Ah. And didn't affect my enjoyment of the episode because actually by the time I watched this episode, I had forgotten. <laughs> Well, also, that was more of a plot convenience. The bugs were just an excuse to drive them into the cave where they could all tell stories instead of waiting for nightfall. Because, you know, we told the scary tales over nightfall last time on the camp out, so why do the exact same thing over again? Even though we were having callbacks to the prior episode, there was no need to remake the whole episode. Mm hmm. And this was a good way to take that setting and use it to tell a different kind of story, or in this case, three different kinds of stories. Yes. So, shall I wrap things up? Mm -hmm. What are your overall thoughts of this episode? I enjoyed it. I mean, for being a cycle of three, I think they handled it rather well, because three made sense, because we had three adult ponies. They were deliberately telling stories to pass the time. They were trying to stay away from scarier elements because, well, partially because of Scootaloo. But also that wasn't the theme. It's like, we're already kind of having an unpleasant situation, so let's tell stories that have happy endings, not scary things. And how everyone has their favorite legends, and because everyone's from different places and have different backgrounds, they didn't all know each other's stories. Hmm. Because even though Rainbow Dash had heard part of Miss Main and knew that she was this withered old unicorn sorceress, Apparently, Rainbow Dash didn't know the story of Miss Main's youth. Mm-hmm. Her origin, as it were. Yes, because that's very much an origin story. You know, yet promising young unicorn and then comes and um, defeats an evil by kindness and by giving up her own beauty, she's able to create beauty for others. Well, now that I think about it, I think it was also, even with the rushed pacing on it because of how short of a time they had to fit it into, I think it was the best handled of the three stories as well. Well, it seemed like we had more opportunity to connect with the characters. There was more of a time lapse, so there was more of a sense of how long things had happened. Where in Applejack's story, yeah, he wants to join this group and they laugh at him. Boy, people in authority in the Pony universe seem to be jerks, with the exception of the princesses. Mm-hmm. And then for Flash, it's like, oh, yeah, we're flying at this exact moment, and everything happens right then. There was really more a progression of time in Rarity's story, so there was more opportunity for there to feel like there was growth of the character, because time passed, even if we didn't see all of it. And I also liked that one the most out of them, too. Though at first I thought I liked Applejack's story the most after I heard all of them, but... The more you talked about it, the more I'm like, yeah, I like that one. I like the middle one the best. <laughs> it's not too soft. It's not too hard. <laughs> uh. Well, it doesn't rely on a magical MacGuffin. We don't have the sudden transformation that we have in Applejacks. We don't have the, oh, here's a magic shield. We have a unicorn who's established to be very powerful from the beginning and it's all innate ability and study because when we see her at the school she's actually mixing herbs with a mortar and pestle it's not just pure magic and i thought overall they handled the whole setup very well and i like how they had each pony have their own story like you said i like how they loosely connected them by coming back to the ponies I also like how Apple Bloom and them were like, can't we just have this every weekend? Like, then it wouldn't be as special as it is now. Yeah, but we could get so much better at camping. <laughs> well, you can still go camping, just not make it this kind of camping. Yeah, you could still go camping. I mean, it just didn't have to be all six of you. And also, you know, when they were cutting back during the stories, everyone going, so what happened next? Because every storyteller loves to hear that. 
especially when you're writing in such a way it's like you give a pause right there because you're expecting a reaction and then no nothing you're like dang it <laughs> okay i gotta change how i have this written in my head because i'm losing my audience but there's no greater compliment when you're writing to have the person who's reading it go so what happens next whether it's your proofreader your editor your friends mm. And I think that's another reason we both like the middle story the most. Because it had moments like that where we're like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I really like this episode. It just flowed really well for having three stories in it. And yeah, I can't wait for the next episode. Which, thanks to not looking at spoilers, I have no idea what's in it. <laughs> that's good. Funny thing, I never seem to be on the internet anymore, so I'm, I'm pretty spoiler free. Not on the internet, she says, but there's all those recordings. <laughs> but I know what you mean. So, outro. Outro. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 16, Campfire Tales. Thanks for listening. I'm guessing if you're listening to the outro, you maybe enjoyed this episode. Please like, subscribe, share, leave a comment below. Thank you to our regular commenters. We do truly appreciate it. And check out other videos. We've been at this a while. There's, There's got to be something you might enjoy. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and a couple of Mastodon servers. Those images hold still, so you can really appreciate the amount of effort he puts into them. Really enjoy Lux's art style and would like something made just for you? check out his commission link for pricing and availability. Would you like to support Lux's art or this channel in general? Please check out our Patreon and Ko-fi pages. Patreon starts at a dollar, Ko-fi works at increments of three. Thank you for your time and consideration.